Hello dear kids, welcome to our science class after a great vacation. I hope you all enjoyed your vacation. Today we'll start the class with head rotation warm up exercise. Stand with your legs straight. Place your leg at shoulder width. Keep your hands loosely at your sides. Then rotate your head clockwise and anticlockwise. We'll do three times on both the sides. Okay, shall we begin? First, we will do in this direction, that is the clockwise direction. Okay, done. Start one, two, three, and start. One, two, three. Then in opposite direction, that is anti clockwise. One, two, and three. We'll do one more time. Clockwise, one, two, and three. Next opposite, one, two, and three. Oh, good. Now, are you ready for the class? Okay then, pick the old one out. Okay, first question, bottle, water, milk, juice. Pick the old one from these. Then I repeat once again. Bottle, water, milk, juice. Pick the old one. Second question. Air, oxygen, carbon dioxide, milk. I repeat once again. Air, oxygen, carbon dioxide and milk. Pick the old one out. Next, answer the following questions. How did you differentiate between the above things? Are they made of same substances? How are they different from one another? So, at the end of this session, we will be able to catch out the answers. There are so many things around us. Sun, moon, stars, buildings, windows, toys, clothes, books, bottles, cars, diamonds, air, water, plants, animals and many more. They are all made of different materials. They are all made of different materials. The stars are made of burning gases. The moon is made of rocks. Buildings are made of bricks and cement. Window panel panes are made of glass. Toys are made of wood, plastic or metal. Plants and animals are made of different types of cells. What are all these materials made of? I repeat the question once again. What are all these materials made of? They are made of matter. They are all made of matter. Let us learn more about matter in this chapter. So children, this is the mind map of the chapter States of Matter. So today, the topic for today is States of Matter. So we will discuss more on the topics of matter. What is a matter? Changes in states of matter. Then different states of matter about solid, liquid, gas, properties of matter and lastly the arrangement of molecules. So children what was the topic? Yes, today's topic is states of matter. So what is matter? Air, all around us is made of matter. Water we drink is also made of matter. Books, bags, food we eat, clothes we wear are all made of matter. Or we can say that just everything we see all around us made of matter. So how we can define matter? Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. 
So children, how we can define matter? You can re uh, repeat after me. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. One more time. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. Now, let us understand this definition. First point is matter has mass. It means matter has some weight. Second point is it occupies space. It means matter need space. Let us take an example to prove it. We learned that everything is made of matter. So, let us take a few things and see are they made of matter. First is water. We have to see this water is made up matter. It should have mass and occupy space. Take an empty glass and weigh it. Now fill it with water. And again weigh it. Which glass has more weight? Yes, glass filled with water has more weight. It means that water has mass or it has weight. Now, can you add anything to a glass or a tumbler which is already full? No, you cannot add anything to a glass or a tumbler which is already full with water or any other liquid. So, it means that water or any liquid occupies space. So, water or any other liquid has mass and occupies space. So, water or liquid is made up of matter. Now, here is another thing and it is a table. We have to see if this is made of matter and for that we have to prove it has prove it, prove it it has mass and it occupies space weigh the table it has weight right now can you place another table at the same place where a table is already there no you cannot so table occupies space so table or any solid object has mass and occupies space so it is made up of matter. Now we will see whether air is made up of matter. And in order to prove that air is made up of matter, we should be able to prove that air has mass and occupies space. Right? So now take an empty balloon and wait. Now fill the same balloon with air and again weigh it. Which balloon has more weight? This one or the filled one? The balloon filled with air has more weight. It means that air has mass or it has, a, it has some weight, right? Now let us see does air occupy space? Now, which balloon occupies more space? Empty balloon or filled balloon? A filled balloon occupies more space. So, it means that air occupies space too. So, air has mass and occupies space. Then we can say that air is made up of matter. Now, you can observe that empty balloon occupies less space and filled balloon occupies more space. Now we know matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. And everything around us including the air is made of matter. Now we see what is matter made of. Matter is made up of tiny microscopic particles called molecules. And further molecules are made up of atoms. Now children, we'll see the arrangement of molecules in solid, liquid and gas.
this is the arrangement of molecules in solid and this is the arrangement of molecules in liquid so more space in between here no space it's tightly packed here this is the arrangement of molecules in gas so many empty spaces we can see right so these are the arrangement of molecules in solid liquid and gas the density or the space between the particles in matter determine what type of matter it is the density or the space between the particles in matter determine what type of matter it is a solid a liquid or a gas so states of matter can be solid liquid or gaseous depending on the density and the space between the particles of the matter now we will learn about the different states of matter solid liquid and gas first let us learn about the solid state of matter first let us learn about the solid state of matter the matter that is in solid state like wooden objects plastic and steel objects the particles are very tightly packed and cannot move at all and so that it is why solid objects cannot change shape I repeat the particles are very tightly packed and cannot move at all and so that it is why solid objects cannot change its shape and remain in the same shape unless large forces applied on a solid object to make it change its shape next we have liquids liquid objects like water juice milk or just any liquid particles are loosely packed and can move and this is why liquid can change their shape example water takes a shape of the container we pour it it into and if we pour water in a glass shape of water is same as that of the glass if we pour the same water in a bowl it will take the shape of the bowl and if we spill water on the floor it will again change its shape this is all because the particles in the liquid object are loosely packed and they can move freely now third form of matter is gaseous state in gaseous objects like air perfumes steam particles are very loosely packed even much more loose than the liquid and can move very freely so that is why gaseous objects do not have any shape they take the shape of their container what is the shape of air in this room it is the same as that of the room what is the shape of air in this balloon it is same as that of the balloon and so that it is why gaseous objects do not have any shape they take the shape of their container and do not have even a fixed volume as the particles are very loosely packed and they are free to move next we will look more on the properties of different states of matter matter mainly has two properties mass and volume so mass is the amount of matter in it and volume is the amount of space that it occupies so matter has mainly two properties mass and volume mass is the amount of matter in it and volume is the amount of space that it occupies first we will see the properties of solids first one specific mass solids have a specific mass that is the amount of matter in it and is mostly measured in grams or kilograms for example pencil is a solid form of matter and its mass or weight is about 4 grams 
So solids have a specific mass. Its mass will remain 4 gram unless you sharpen it or reduce it anyhow. Second property is specific shape. Solids have a specific shape. A pencil, a cupboard, a chair are all examples of solid forms of matter. That is, if you have a pencil, you keep it anywhere. Its shape will not change. It has a specific shape. It will not change its shape unless you apply some force to it. That is, if you sharpen it, it will become smaller but otherwise its shape doesn't change. No matter where you keep it. Similarly, all solids have specific shape and specific mass. There is little or no space between particles of solids and the particles just cannot move. So that is why solids do not change their shape on their own. Next property is specific volume. Solids have specific volume that is the amount of space they occupy does not change no matter wherever you place them. The same pencil you place anywhere, it will occupy the same space. It will not happen that any particular place it is occupying less space or any place is occupying more space. But it always occupies the same space. So it has specific volume. So we learn solids have specific shape, mass and volume. Now let us learn properties of liquids. First of all, liquids do not have a specific shape like solids. Liquids flow and you can pour them in any container and they take up the shape of that container. If there is some water in a glass container, its shape is same as that of the glass container. If you pour into a jar, it will take the shape of a jar. If you pour it in a jug, it will take the shape of a jug. See why liquids can flow or it can change the shape. The molecules of liquids have some free space between them. And so is why they can move. So that is why liquids can flow. Opposite to solids. The molecules in solids have little or no space between them. And the particles cannot move. Solids does not change the shape and liquids can change the shape. That is why water or any liquid have no shape of their own. They just take on the shape of the container. Now the ne their next property. Liquids have fixed volume. Just like solids, liquids keep their Keep their same volume. That is, if you have 250 ml of water, if you pour it in a 1 liter of container, it will remain 250 ml of water, right? If you pour 250 ml of water in a 500 ml of container, it will remain 250 ml of water. That is, a volume of water does not change. Now, let us learn the next property of water. Liquids have fixed mass. The weight of a given amount of liquid remains the same. No matter which container you pour it in. If you have 1 liter of any liquid, it will remain a liter of liquid. So if you learn, so we learned liquids have fixed volume, fixed mass, but no fixed shape. Now, let us learn properties of another state of matter that is gaseous state. Gases do not have specific shape and volume. Gases spread out to fill up the space and volume of the container. Take two balloons of different shapes. Now, fill them with the same amount of air. Air will take the shape of the balloon it is filled into. And when you let the air out of the balloon, the gases spread out in the surrounding air. So air does not have any definite shape or volume of its own. It takes the shape of its container and fills the volume of its container. 
So now you can see two balloons, right? Of different shapes. Now I fill the balloon with the same amount of air. So now here you can see air will take the shape of the balloon. It is filled into. And when you let the air out of the balloon, the gas is spread out in the surrounding air. So, so the gas is spread out in the surrounding air. So air does not have any definite shape or volume of its own. Now it takes the shape of the room, right? And it fills the volume of the room. Take a bottle of room freshener and spray it on your room. Now you can smell the room freshener anywhere in the room. That is because there was a gas in the bottle of the room freshener that spread out. So gases do not have any fixed volume, they just spread out. So we learned gases do not have any definite shape or volume. Next, we will move on to the changes in states of matter. The states of matter may be changed by heating or cooling it. All such changes are reversible. Activity for you children, perform the activities to observe the changes in the states of matter and record it. First one, pour some water in a bowl and put it in a refrigerator. Observe the bowl after about an hour. What has happened to the water in the bowl? Second one, remove the bowl from the refrigerator. Leave it for about half an hour in a room. What do you see after some time? Third, pour the water from the bowl into a pan and ask an elder person to boil it. What do you see? Ask the elder person, fourth one, ask the elder person to hold a plate over the pan. What happens when the water vapors from the pan touch the plate? The vapors turn into dash. Then, when water is put into the freezer, it changes into ice, right? Thus, on cooling, matter changes from liquid state to solid state. This process is called freezing. I repeat, freezing. Formation of ice cream from milk is also a common example of freezing. Have you ever wondered why your ice cream melts when you take a long time to eat it? Actually, the temperature of the surrounding is higher than the temperature of the ice cream. The heat from the surroundings causes the ice cream to melt. Similarly, when the ice is put out from the refrigerator and is kept in a room, it changes into water. Thus, on heating, matter changes from solid state to liquid state. This process is called melting. When water is heated, it changes into water vapor or steam which is the gaseous form of water. Thus, on heating, matter changes from liquid state to gaseous state. The process by which a liquid change into its gaseous state is called vaporization. I repeat, vaporization. Then, when water vapor or steam is cool, it changes into water. Thus, on cooling, matter changes from gaseous state to liquid state. This process is called condensation. Process is called condensation. You have seen that solid changes into liquid and then into gas. However, there are some solids that directly change from solid to gaseous state. This process is called sublimation. I repeat, sublimation. Camphor and naphthalene balls are two such solids that undergo the process of sublimation. Naphthalene balls are put in woolen clothes to keep them safe from insects. These naphthalene balls slowly become smaller in size over time because of sublimation process. The warm air present in the surroundings changes the solid balls into gaseous state. Next, we will move on to the topic solution. What do you do to make a glass of water sweet? 
you add some sugar in it right then stir the solution of sugar and water for some time can you see the sugar in the water now let us find out what does the sugar vanish in the water we know that the molecules of water are loosely packed and have some spaces between them when the sugar is mixed into the water the molecules of sugar fit themselves into these spaces on stirring the water sugar gets completely dissolved in the water thus it appears that sugar has vanished in the water however the molecules of sugar are present in the spaces between the molecules of water this is also the reason why there is no increase in the level of water in glass when sugar is completely dissolved in water I repeat when the sugar is completely dissolved in water completely dissolved in water the volume of the water remains the same then this mixture of water and sugar is called solution mixture of water and sugar is called solution the substance that is used in smaller amount and mixed with more of another substance is called solute the substance that is used in smaller amount which is called the solute and in this case sugar is the solute the substance present in more quantity in the solution is the solvent less smaller quantity it is called the solute okay so hence water is the solvent and sugar is the solute in this case then substance that dissolve in water we call soluble substance sugar and salt are some soluble substances do all solids dissolve in water what will happen when you try to dissolve sand or mud in the water these substances do not dissolve in water right substances that do not dissolve in water are called insoluble substances that dissolve substances are dissolved substances are called soluble substances and that do not dissolve in water are called insoluble substances pebble husk chalk and so dust are some examples of insoluble substances now let us perform an activity to check if a substance dissolves in water pour some water in a glass and mark the level of water now here i mark the water level now add a teaspoon of salt into it does the water level rise yes now you can see slightly it rises right the water level rises a little as the salt is not dissolved in water now stir the water for some minutes okay five or two or three minutes stir the water now check the water level the level of the water does not change this is because the salt particles do not occupy any extra space they simply dissolve in water to form a salt solution so children that's all for now one activity for you draw the arrangement of molecules that are arranged in each state of matter also describe the volume and shape of that state of matter so children this is the time to recall can you recall what we have learned today we learned about the matter the properties of solid liquid and gas and also about the interconversion of matter and lastly about the solution so bye take care and happy learning